Hi, here we're asked to predict the shape of each of the following species. So let's go ahead and start with A. And the first thing we have to do is draw the Lewis structure. Now, in this, um, for this compound here, it's um, obvious that carbon is a central atom. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the basic skeletal structure here. We have three fluorines. And I need to uh, determine the number of valence electrons. So we have seven for fluorine, and uh, we have four fluorine. So that's three times seven plus one for hydrogen plus four for carbon. So that's going to be 21, 26 electrons. So we've already taken care of uh, two, four, six, eight electrons in each of the four bonds. So let's go ahead and start putting the electrons on the fluorines. And let's see how many electrons we can account. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, 6, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So we've distributed all of the electrons. Each of the uh, fluorine atoms has an octet. Carbon has an octet. And of course, hydrogen can only have two electrons. So this is a valid Lewis structure. So let's see, as far as the shape goes, we're only looking at the central carbon. So we have four groups about carbon, so uh, or charge clouds, if you will, four bonds, and zero lone pairs. So what we have is a tetrahedral geometry. Now, let's take a look at this molecule, and let's determine if it is polar or nonpolar. And again, we have a tetrahedral geometry. Now, if all four of these atoms were identical, then we would have a nonpolar molecule. But in this case, we have the four fluorines and one hydrogen. So in this case, we have a polar molecule. Now, let's look at B, and we have phosphorus trichloride. Count up the number of valence electrons, and for phosphorus, we have five, and seven for chlorine, we have seven, um, um, three chlorines, so that's 26 electrons. So let's go ahead and draw the skeletal structure. So I'll just draw it like so. And then I'm going to start distributing the electrons on the chlorines. Make sure they all get an octet. And let's see, I'll start counting. I have um, 18, 20, 22, 24. I have a pair of electrons left over, and according to the rules, a pair of electrons goes right onto the um, central atom here. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what we have here. Uh, we definitely have a valid Lewis structure. All of the atoms have an octet of electrons. So here we uh, have four charge clouds around the phosphorus. We have the lone pair and then the three chlorines. We have three atoms. Uh, there's three bonds. And we have one lone pair. So uh, we know that this corresponds to a trigonal pyramidal geometry. Okay, now, question is here, uh, do we have a polar or nonpolar molecule? Remember, this lone pair of electrons is going to be more diffused, or it's going to um, take up much more room and than the electrons in the bonds. And so therefore, there's going to be um, more electron density here. So yes, we have a polar molecule. All right, let's take a look at C. And let's go back here. What was C? Ah, C was the ammonium ion. So let me get that written out here. And let's count the number of valence electrons. We have five for nitrogen plus four for hydrogen, and 
minus one electron because of the positive charge. So let's see, what we have is eight electrons. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw skeletal structure here. And don't forget your brackets and put in the positive sign here. And I count um, my nitrogen has an octet. Of course, hydrogens only get two electrons. So this would be the Lewis structure, uh, taking care of all eight valence electrons. And as far as the shape goes, I have, um, as far as nitrogen goes, we have four charge clouds, four bonds, and zero lone pairs. So what we have is a tetrahedral geometry.